The problem in Nigeria is not legislation. We have wonderful environmental laws. We have good legislation. For example, even the criminal act in Nigeria, before we even had environmental protection laws or guidelines and standards for protection of the environment or national policy on the environment, which was launched in 1990, before then, Nigeria's criminal act says that anybody who vitiates or fouls the atmosphere is liable to either jail or fine. And unknown to many Nigerians and the global community, Chief MK Abiola, who won the election that was annulled, actually took somebody to court in the 60s for violating his air right by fouling the air with the uh, smell for, from his poultry farm. And Chief Abiola won the case and he received the fine. So you can imagine in the 60s, a Nigerian, knowing such a law exists, warned his neighbor never to foul the air with the odor from the poultry. And he, and he took, it, took the fellow to court and he won. All these are documented at the Institute of Advanced Legal Studies in the University of Lagos. We are the study law. We have all the laws. But the problem is this, enforcement. But well, I must say in the beginning, the Federal Environmental Protection Agency, under Dr. Evans, I know, traveled around the country. I was part of the team. On a regular basis, we traveled. Enlightening industries, all over the country. I, can, I have photographed all, all the industries we visited, from north to south, Port Harcourt, even the fertilizer company, the tannery industries in Kano, because these industries differ in their pollution depending on what they produce. In Lagos, we went all over Lagos. In Ilori, I remember we were coming, go from Ilori to Benway Cement Company. We had accident. Dr. Aino almost died. Also in Calabar, we went to an industry that was polluting the air with 30 bags of cement dust every hour. So the laws are there. And I was there when Dr. Aino, it was stunned. And the law was, if you pollute the air, or release effluence from textile industry, especially in Kaduna and Lagos, that has about 60% of industries in Nigeria, the chief executive of the company will be fined 500,000 naira, which is a lot of money, and was still a lot of money for every day the pollution passes. Secondly, the man who is the chief executive of the industry, is also liable to jail for two years. So Dr. Aino sensitized every part of Nigeria. And in fact, the directors of the companies were on their toes. And they were installing pollution abatement equipment. We had colonial laws that also uh, tackled environmental issues. We had sanitary inspectors in the 1980s. 1990s, uh, and so there's no reason why Nigeria cannot carry out enforcement. Now the problem is we also have new agencies under the civilian regime. Like I was saying, before then, we had a maximum ruler called General Abacha, notorious for uh, you know, his quest to accumulate wealth. His regime was responsible for the importation of toxic wares for a fuel into Nigeria. So, which the fuel that was contaminated and the fume was noxious to the nostrils and people were vomiting in vehicles. So, but when the head is rotting, the whole body is bad. So, at that time, enforcement began to dwindle. And by the time the civilian came, Obasanjo tried to have Nestria and Nostra to check oil spills as well as um, enforce standards, but uh, we still need more action from these two agencies under the Federal Ministry of Environment to be able to enforce both oil spills, take oil companies that are violators to court, and again enforce it in industries. I mean, I have nostalgia for FEPA days. I wish industrial owners, I wish oil companies will be on their toes when they hear that Nestria is coming or Nostra is coming. 
the same way in those days when they had FEPA or um, Dr. I know was coming. Everybody was on his toe. And I think it has to do with leadership. And because some of the crop of experts that went to form Nostra and Nostra were also all FEPA staff. So I think it has to do with leadership. The leadership has to be stern. And that's the way I look at it.